Hey guys. Good to see everyone. Hello, Joyce is on YouTube. Um, today, um, if you're joining us for the first time, we're going to read a service for Noonday Prayer. It begins on page 103 in our Book of Common Prayer. Um, if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer to follow along with, you can go to bcponline.org. Um, for those of you who like to get situated before we get started, um, we are celebrating today um, St. James, the brother of Jesus, and we will be reading Psalm 1. So I'll let everyone get situated and then we'll get started. All right, we begin on page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Today we're reading Psalm 1. It's found on page 585 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 1 on page 585, and we'll say it together. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed." Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told them all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this, I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen from its ruins. I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all the other peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore, I have reached the decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. For in every city, for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. Then the apostles and the elders, with the consent of the whole church, decided to choose men from among their members and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we are celebrating um, St. James, brother of Christ, and I will um, read to you a little bit about him. In the gospel according to Matthew and in the epistle to the Galatians, the James whom we commemorate today is called the Lord's brother. Other writers following Mark's tradition believe him to have been a cousin of Jesus. 
Certain apocryphal writings speak of him as a son of Joseph's first wife. Whatever his relationship to Jesus, brother, half-brother, cousin, James was converted after the resurrection. Eventually, he became bishop of Jerusalem. In the first letter to the Corinthians, 15.7, Paul says that James was favored with a special appearance of the Lord before the ascension. Later, James dealt cordially with Paul at Jerusalem when the latter came there to meet Peter and the other apostles. During the Council of Jerusalem, when there was a disagreement about whether Gentile converts should be circumcised, James summed up the momentous decision with these words. My judgment is that we should impose no irksome restrictions on those Gentiles who are turning to God. Acts 15.19 Eusebius, quoting from an earlier church history by Hegesippus, Hegesippus, that's kind of a tough one, declares that James was surnamed the just. He was holy, abstemious, did not cut his hair nor oil his body, and was continually on his knees in prayer, interceding for his people. As many as came to believe did so through James, says Hegesippus. James's success in converting many to Christ greatly perturbed some factions in Jerusalem. According to Hegesippus, they begged him to restrain the people for they have gone astray to Jesus, thinking him to be the Messiah. We bear you witness that you are just. Persuade the people that they do not go astray. We put our trust in you. They then set James on the pinnacle of the temple, bidding him to preach to the multitude and turn them from Jesus. James, however, testified to the Lord. Thereupon they hurled him from the roof to the pavement and cudgeled him to death. What a way to end that story. Also, I'll be looking up other examples of the word cudgel later today. Um, so there are several things that one could say about James, the brother of um, Jesus. He is um, another example of apostle who under Roman rule um, refused to deny his faith in Christ at the expense of his own life. Um, he was also clearly um, a leader, someone who used his voice um, to proclaim the Lord and help others to proclaim the Lord. He was someone who was listened to. Um, but what strikes me most about James is that he presumably grew up with Jesus and was with Jesus um, you know, throughout his formational years and the beginning of his ministry, and yet was not converted until after the resurrection. Um, and I think this is a powerful witness for a lot of reasons. Um, something that has struck me um, in this pandemic is that we are all um, we are all sort of exploring and investigating new facets of our relationships with our biological families. Um, I have a good friend who once told me um, that we have a biological family and a logical family, and both are very important and formative, one of whom we are born into and one of whom we choose throughout our lives. And um, I have known so many, I've heard so many stories of people who have said, you know, in this um in this pandemic, the people that I have gotten closer to and the people with whom I've developed relationships have been, you know, my brother or my aunt or my cousin. Um, I too have felt sort of, I guess, just with so much, you know, fear and danger in 2020, I have felt more, um, more, I don't know if protective is the right word, but I keep checking in on my siblings and my dad all the time to make sure they're okay, which I did not do before. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but also there are a lot of folks who have had to make the difficult decisions, uh, to not tie themselves emotionally to their biological family, especially in a time like this in a pandemic. Uh, and what I'm learning from all of this is that, um, you know, society has a lot to say about how we're supposed to. Um, interact with and get along with and behave with our biological family. Society has a lot to say about um, the the role that our biological family or family of origin is supposed to play in our lives. Um, but I think that those relationships are journeys just like any other.
Um, and I am struck by how um, James was able to sort of presumably put his tail between his legs and uh, come to Jesus after the resurrection and said, you know, now I believe. Um, and that relationship was um, restored. Um, I also think it's powerful that James was able to um, proclaim to the world something that he once um, had denied, similar to Paul, um, a power, no zeal like a convert. Um, it's a powerful message for someone to, um, to be able to um, sort of publicly proclaim um, as wrong. And I think that um, the foundation of them being related probably played a key role in that, um, which gives me um, sort of hope and excitement for the ways that um, the people that we are related to genetically, um, how those relationships can grow and change. They're not stagnant. They're not something um, that can be dictated by society or um, strictly by um, what has happened in the past. Um, and they're also, um, there's no telling, um, there's no telling um, the fruit that those relationships can bear. Um, so I love, uh, I know that, um, you know, relationships with our biological family can be a touchy subject. Not everyone has um, life-giving relationships with those people in their lives. Um, but I, for those who do, or for those who long for that, um, I am encouraged by the witness of James, um, brother, cousin, half-brother of Jesus, um, that he was able to um, grow from the, that foundation and that relationship and um, become an important witness for Christ. So that's my spiel about James. I also have a brother named James who is significantly younger than I am. And I am um, longing for the time when we are both adults and can have um, an adult relationship. So that uh, especially uh, struck me today um, as sort of, you know, don't give up. Brother James's will come around. Uh, so we will continue with our prayers um, on page 106 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that following the example of your servant James the Just, brother of our Lord, your church may give itself continually to prayer and to the reconciliation of all who are at variance and enmity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of intercession, silently or aloud. Here at Christ Church today, we pray especially for Bob, Joe, Jean, Adrian, Anne, John, Richard, Joanna, Sarah, Louise, Beth, Patricia. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Charles Harvey. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your beloved Jesus Christ in whom you have shared the beauty and pain of human life. Look with compassion upon all for whom we pray and strengthen us to be your instruments of healing in the world by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
It was a delight to be with you all, as always. Um, I hope that everyone is having um, a um, calm and life-giving and pleasant week. I know the weather decided to um, give us one more little hint of summer, um, which is not very nice. Um, but I hope you guys are are doing well, holding down the fort, enjoying this transitional weather season. Um, as ever, if there's anything that you need from Christ Church or any way um, in which we might be praying for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to be in touch. And um, I hope everyone has a, a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you all hopefully virtually on Sunday. Bye, guys.